Welcome everybody to another episode of Kingdom Perspectives. We are on episode four already. My name's Tammy and I'm from Lions Arise. Um, Lions Arise is a platform that um, provides inner healing, um, provides connections, networks um, to receive counseling from others. Um, you'll find them as ministry partners on the website and you can reach out to them. Um, in different areas. We also provide resources and yeah, just support for walking in your kingdom identity and just for building um, whatever it is that you need built into your spirit, your soul and your body, because that's also part of our focus is we're a holistic being. We can't just focus on the one part. And so we have to take care of the whole person um, so even as we deal with the spiritual topics, we also need to understand how that impacts our body and how that impacts our soul, because that's how we're going to be in good health, is we have if we have the overall wellness. Um, and we know that only comes through the spirit as well. And so today I have with me again my co-host, Bernie van Beek. So Bernie, I'll give over to you. Yeah, thanks, Tim. So uh, we have a, an umbrella ministry called Africa Blaze. And at the moment, we um, are establishing a work in Malmesbury in the Western Cape called Christian Centrum Malmesbury or Christian Centre Malmesbury. And uh, our work at the, at the moment is around the underprivileged communities. We focus on um, widows, as well um, and children we're still in a in a building phase at the moment but we we're making good progress together with god's help and grace um our our message to people is that um you know god is real god is personal he's interested in every detail of your life he's involved in every detail of your life whether you know it or not so we just um really focus on trying to get people to know God, who He is, how much He loves them, you know, to get them to see that they were fearfully and wonderfully made, that they have a destiny, that they have a purpose. And we focus on that relationship, you know, how, to, um, how, to, how they can hear God's voice, how they can connect with Him, how they can connect with the different aspects of who He is, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And just to restore identity, um, and dignity you know in people and also just to, to 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 mentor people you know and coach them and just help them to live life you know live kingdom life practically you know just help them with tools and keys um you know how to be relational with other people in the kingdom you know how to be relational with with people you know because often this is stuff that people struggle with you know it's like but this person did this to me and they say they're Christian and this happened and that happened. And it's like, you know, what we found is sometimes that people have um, this, this uh, I've got the Afrikaans words in my head here. Yeah. Misconception is the word I'm looking for. Now, I'm an English guy, but I've been in Malmesbury so long that I'm thinking in Afrikaans these days. <laughs> <laughs> A misconception that, you know, if you're a Christian, that you've got to be perfect and you're not going to make mistakes and you're always going to do the right things and you're not going to hurt people. But unfortunately, that's not, mm -hmm. you know, that's not how it works. So we just try and help people, you know, around how they engage on a relational level, you know, not to get their hearts wounded, <laughs> by, you know, by immature believers and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but, you know, love and relationship, connecting with God, Restoring identity is something that's very important to us um, as, our minist as, as a ministry. Mm, awesome. Thanks, Boone. So we're carrying on with our topic of faith today. And um, you know it's a vast topic and there's a lot that can be said around faith. And I know you want to speak today about mental faith versus heart faith which i think is is a pretty awesome topic it's something we need to understand and um, i want to just start off with just defining 
faith. So that just the different aspects of our faith in it, and it'll kind of weave into where you want to go as well, right? So, so defining faith, right? It's it's belief and trust, right? It involves trust and faith or belief in something or someone. So for us, you know, it's it's that faith that we have in God and faith that, you know, he's going to come through for us. There's a conviction and a confidence in something that it's true and it's real, right? Mm. And so even in the absence of having that concrete proof for it, you can still believe that it's real. So we think of what Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, right? And then there's yeah. obviously a spiritual trust in somebody that's, that what they'd say in spirituality, a divine uh, being or a or a higher consciousness. But for us, we know that's God. That's that's where our spiritual trust is. It's it's in God. And then there's also the concept of leap of faith, right? Where we sometimes having faith involves us to take that leap of faith, like Peter climbing out of the boat and walking on the water, right? Or or we want to take on a big venture, and so part of of faith is is taking that leap of faith and having yes. trust that that it's going to work out. And then if we just look at sort of the role of faith in in our belief system and you know it's it's that connection to God it's it, that faith that we have is like our bridge that connects us to God who is the source who is the power um behind everything in our lives and and the things um that need to happen right it's also a source of meaning for us because because it creates a sense of meaning. It creates um, almost purpose in life, right? Just think if we had no faith, if we had no faith in in anything, what kind of a life would we have? You know, it's and and for for each of us, we know that our faith is very personal, but it also helps us to make sense of life. It helps us to have a sense of excitement about life, to to have faith in those things that are bigger than us things that we can dream for, you know, and hope for. And then it also just provides um, hope, like we've spoken before, you know, hope is different from faith, but but we need to have the faith to reach the hope as well. And it provides a resiliency in us because if we can have a faith in something, a faith in life, a faith in that thing that we're believing for, it creates resilience in us when everything looks like it's falling down around us. It it breeds resilience and we know with psychology we look at vulnerability versus resilience where if you have very poor internal resources you're going to be more vulnerable to life's challenges than having resilience where you've got good internal resources and so life's not going to kick you down as easily as the next person and I feel like that's our faith you know, is that resilience versus the vulnerability, whereas fear would be the vulnerability and, and faith creates the resilience in life. And then also just the, that faith that we have, a lot of what we believe, the way we live our lives, you know, our moral convictions, the way our, our life is guided is based on our faith, what we believe in, who we believe in, right? Um, and that gives us sort of a compass uh, in our life as well. So I just wanted to start off um, with that to just give a little bit of a, a building block. Um, so maybe you can jump in from there and share what you want to share. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, there was uh, <clears throat> quite a lot to take in. I think if we, I mean, that covered quite a bit. That's probably going to cover the next six months of podcasts. <laughs> so it was a bit, it was a very good summary. So we'll Thank expand you. on that in the next uh, yeah. fifty podcasts. <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you look at, you know, we, you know, mental faith versus heart faith. Um. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, you know, Numbers 23, nor the son of man that he should repent. And it says, has he not said it? And will he not do it? Has he not promised? And, and will he not make good on his promise? So you can, you know, take it to the bank, you know, when God says anything. Mm. And that's what faith is about. It's believing that God is who he is and that he will do what he said he will do. Because the fact is, 
you know, it says in Hebrews that he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So his word carries power and it, carry, it also it carries power because God cannot lie. If God was a liar, everything would not exist right now. Mm. Because it, it proves that he's not a liar, the fact that, that everything exists and there's order. But the interesting thing is, it says that God is not a man that he should lie. And unfortunately... Everybody on the face of this earth is man. And they lie. <laughs> and unfortunately, some other time we do all lie. <laughs> but the point that it's making is that, you know, often, you know, talking about mental faith versus heart faith, often, you know, we, we're trusting for something and, and then, you know, we feel that doubts are coming along. But we need to be, you know, we need to recognize where those doubts are coming from mm. Mm. because faith you when it comes to faith you don't have mental agreement you have heart agreement because you're actually you're agreeing with something you're agreeing with god you're agreeing with his word you're agreeing with who he is and that you do not do on a mental capacity like we said you know when the when the spirit in operation the mind is unfruitful mm -hmm. And people are going to hear me say these kinds of things over and over. And the reason I'm doing that is not because I don't have anything better to say. It's because I want to reinforce that we need to get these principles because it's going to help our work with God. When you deal with God, you need to flow out of your heart, out of your spirit. That inner man of the belly, you know, Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, not out of your head. So... You know, sometimes we believe in God and we doubt. But yes, the good news is that we can doubt in our head and believe in our heart. You know, because we men and we can lie, sometimes our mind will lie to us. Mm. And that's why, you know, as we said last week, we don't go into our heads, we go into our spirit. That's where we access God. That's where we believe. Mm. Okay. So... You know, it says, it says in Romans 10, for with the heart man believes. It doesn't say for with the head man believes. And if you read Mark eleven twenty-three, 23, Jesus also talks about believing with the heart and mm. not with the head. Mm. I just want to read that for you. It says here in, in Mark eleven twenty-three, 23, whoever, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be, the, be removed and be cast into the sea and will not doubt where in, in his head, no, and will not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in his heart that those things which he say will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Hmm. So okay. we see that. I want to stop you here quick. Yeah. And I want to pray because I feel that what you're speaking about now is very important. And we didn't start with prayer, but as you're speaking, I just feel the Spirit saying to me, we need to pray because people need to get this needs to come yeah because the enemy okay. will come and steal it yeah okay so yeah. I'll, i'm just going to pray quickly Thanks. so yeah thank you father god for this mm -hmm. time that we have i thank you holy spirit for your revelation that that comes forth today father as as we speak and as we share that it'll be your word that comes forth and father we just cancel today every demonic assignment coming against everybody listening to this podcast today Father, that nothing will be stolen from them. I pray, Father, for protection for their minds, that they'll wear that helmet of salvation, Lord, um, to protect their thoughts from the lies of the enemy, Father God. And I pray that their hearts will become a fruitful ground to receive these words, that it will not fall by the wayside. The enemy will not come and steal it, but that it will take root and it will bear fruit. And, Father, we ask for your spirit of understanding and your spirit of knowledge that they may receive this word today and act upon it. And we just ask this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, so the, 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 the important thing is, you know, that even though, you know, you want to doubt in your mind, you know, your heart is the place that's connected to God. Mm. And, you know, everything happens with faith, you know, and faith is, Faith is one of the weapons that we that we warfare with. Mm. So, 
And we do not, you know, the, the word says in Ephesians 6, 4, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. You know, and it says in, it says in 2 Corinthians 10, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty through God. So we're not using natural weapons here. Mm. And so we, we access God on a supernatural level. We access God from the spirit, from the heart. And that's how we warfare. Because faith is one of the tools that we war with. Mm. You know, it's, it's part of our armor. And we have to get the revelation of faith before we are carrying our shield. You know, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna share a couple of stories over and over, and you know, I'm just gonna say it again that if you hear me saying stuff over and over, it's just because, you know, in my own life, I've I've had to listen to teachings like over and over, and I've had to read the word over and over before it actually dropped, before it sunk in, before I understood, before it became a part of who I am. You know, there was this one pastor that said he preached the same message as this church. And this guy came up to him off the church and he says, do you know that I've been counting that you've preached the same message at this church 10 times already? <laughs> and the pastor said to him, do you understand this message? And he said, no. And he said, well, that's why I've preached it 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the reinforcement, right? Because that's even how our brains work. It's, it's the reinforcing of that thing to create that neural mm -hmm. pathway. So sometimes we need to listen to something over and over or hear it over and over to create the pathway <laughs> in the brain for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is, you know, for me, this is a very important thing that we're talking about today because I think the enemy gives a lot of believers a hiding, you know, and he discourages them. You know, I mean, me, myself, you know, I've read James and it says, you know, if you, if you doubt and you toss to and fro, then you don't receive anything. You know, and it's like you have to discern where is my faith coming from? You know, this thing that I'm trusting for, where am I trusting God for it? Mm. Because sometimes it's difficult to explain spiritual things, um, you know, because we're all so unique and we all experience God in our own way. And I, can't, I don't know how to explain it, but when I'm trusting God for something, there's something inside of me that's so solid and so real that it almost feels like a physical substance inside of me. It's like I know that I know mm. that what I'm trusting God for is going to come to pass. I know that I know that you know God is who He is and He's going to do what He's going to do. And But the enemy will come and attack my mind and he'll come and say to me, yeah, but this, yeah, but this, but it, it you know, it's too big for you. Um, it costs too much money. Um, it's too difficult. You know, you're not going to be able to do this. And it's like, you know, it, it's those times where you've just got to know that, okay, I'm, I'm warfaring with this from my heart. My, I'm not letting my mind get in the way. I'm not letting my, I'm not letting the enemy's reasoning. It's trying to pull me away. It's trying to make me doubt. Mm. You understand? Mm. Because we, you know, the enemy talks to us in the first person. He doesn't come to you and say, oh, you this and you that. He says, oh, I think this is too difficult. You know, he, he gives you a thought and you think it's your own thought, but it's not your thought because he's talking to you in the first person. And he tricks so many people like this. And the Holy Spirit actually showed me this. And it, it, when, I, when I snapped that, it's like, I think it probably took 90% you know, of his power away mm. regarding my thoughts because... It's like you think it's you and then you get into shame, guilt and condemnation or you get out of faith because you think like these are your thoughts, but they're not your thoughts. So I just want to give you some science behind how the enemy speaks um, through our thoughts, right? So the enemy uses our brain waves. So spirit communicates to spirit, right? That's, that's how they operate. So it's a very metaphysical process. You can't actually see it. So we've got... Four types of brain waves that are so we've got the beta waves, right? That help us to comprehend the external world. Okay. And that's the information that comes in through our five senses, comes in through there. Then we've got theta waves, which is the connection between the soul and the spirit. Okay. And this allows for thoughts to move from the spirit world into your mind see this is how god's created us so intricately and in our brains you know so god also communicates with us 
So we receive and comprehend through pictures, um, through thoughts, you know, just to, through through things that we see. And this is the pathway that the spirit can communicate. So we hear in the spirit, we hear the Holy Spirit, we hear the human spirit. The human spirit is sort of connected to our heart or is actually in our heart. And so the devil and the kingdom will also operate at that level to communicate with us. His minions that come and drop those, those little seeds. So it's also the same pathway that shamans use for hypnosis, right, to get access to those brain waves to be able to do what they do. And then you've got the alpha waves that integrates all the information that's coming, you know, in from around you, and then our delta waves that's linked to our sleep. So the enemy will drop that thought via those brain waves, and then you think it's you that's speaking that thought. Right? So it's very interesting. And something the Lord also showed me a long time ago, um, even before, you know, the books came out from, you know, Joyce Myers wrote Battlefield of the Mind and, and all of that stuff. It's like I was ruminating on something the one day. And, you know, when we start to ruminate and overthink something, it becomes almost a reality in our lives and it, it messes with your faith, it messes with your peace and everything. And so the Lord was like, all the enemy does is he comes and he drops a little seed in your ear and then he goes away. That's all he does. You water it, you nurture it, you grow that thing by thinking about it, by, 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 by uh, ruminating on it. And so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and he's run off to irritate the next person, and you sitting with all this stuff because you've allowed that thing to be watered. So if we think about um, mental faith versus heart faith, come let us water <laughs> the seeds in our heart, right, okay. rather than the seeds in our brain or, or mm. in our mind where we, where we think mentally about something. Those are the seeds we need to water because they will then grow bigger than what's happening in the mind. And we know when we're in the spirit, we can't be in the mind. So I just want you to add that. Yeah, and it's like, you see, I often share with people the word, the word devil. If you, if you look at it in the Greek, Diablo or Diablos, it actually means the one that buffets. So it's this like this constant like buffering. You know, mm -hmm. he's coming at you the whole time, Where speaking to you, putting stuff there, blah blah blah. And and like you say, it it it, it can get to that point where all he needs to do is he just needs to come and drop that seed and leave. You know, and then you do all the work yourself because mm -hmm. he actually trains you and he programs you that through all the times that you've allowed him to that you haven't recognized that it's that it's him bringing those thoughts to you and you know we were talking about 2 corinthians 10 that says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but it's also talking about strongholds there mm -hmm. and in strongholds almost like an obsession you know there's different levels of um demonic oppression and stuff i don't want to go into too much detail about that side of it but obsession is when a thought actually allows, goes from an external influence into an internal demonic oppression. And it actually obsesses in your mind. Mm. And it's almost like, if I can use an analogy or an example, every time that thought comes and you meditate on that thought, it builds a track. And you know, like a, tr a, a toy train runs around, like choo, 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 choo. And that, that track gets built in your head. And then once that track's established, that train just runs the whole time and it just loops in your head and you have this thought and it becomes an obsession mm. and it interferes it, and it, it becomes like a stronghold, you know, in your life. Mm. And then we need these weapons, you know, these spiritual weapons to warfare against that and to pull those strongholds down and to break up those tracks that the enemy's created in our mind. And often those thoughts become so loud that they overpower what our heart is saying. Mm. Mm. But, you know, like Jesus says, be of good courage. The heart is more powerful than the mind. Mm. And as long as we, you know, we, we, we trust God and we go into the heart and we, you know, we just focus there and we tap into the spiritual realm, we can overcome 
those strongholds, you know, because that's what the word says, that we can pull down those strongholds, we can take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ, mm. to the obedience of the word. Mm. And it's, it's a skill, you know, everything that we, that we do in the kingdom, it's a skill that we're learning. It's a key that we're learning how to use. You know, that's what, you know, it's like Paul says, exercise your faith. You've got to exercise these things, you know, you've got to use them. You've got to practice them so that you can get good at them. Mm. So that when the enemy comes, you can resist him because, and, and specifically now dealing with faith, faith is for resisting because what is a shield? Mm. You know, besides, you know, besides protection, if somebody shoots an arrow at you or swings a sword at you, you know, you, you're resisting those things. You know, you're putting your shield in the way. You're resisting that sword. You're resisting that arrow. Mm. If the enemy runs at you, you knock him back with your shield. And it's important for us to have the revelation of faith so that we can use that shield effectively. Mm. You know, um, the Holy Spirit, you know, the one day, okay, I'll share, the, I'll share that at a later date. I'll share that at a later date. Yeah, but I it's important for us. Yeah. yeah, I just want to add to the faith as a shield. Um, so I have some points. So for everybody who doesn't know, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I like teaching. I like giving some some little nuggets there. So if we look at faith as a shield, all right, so let's just have a look at that. So first of all, it's protection from doubt, right, because it guards against those physical attacks that come against us. And faith can really shield us from doubt and uncertainty if we focus on the faith versus the fear so it provides a, a strong foundation for us trust mm. and belief it guards the mind right just like you were speaking now it helps us to resist those negative thoughts um, that the enemy brings against us you know that that really challenge us in those areas and the fear and the temptations and and all the stuff that comes with it so it acts also like a like a mental shield that keeps the mind focus on on what we're supposed to be thinking about the positive beliefs and the values you know i guess somehow like the helmet of salvation we need all those weapons that work together because mm -hmm. that helmet really protects the head you know where we need to understand um number one who our head is <laughs> that that covers us and then it protects uh, uh, that very vulnerable part of us and then that shield also, when faced with challenges, that faith as a shield can provide the strength um, that we need to stand up against those, those challenges. You know, it helps us to not fall into despair or lose hope and that sort of thing. And then we look at the warfare part of it, which we've talked about, right? It, it helps us to stand strong when there's attacks coming because of what we believe and who we believe in, right? Who, who is our strength? And then it's also like an emotional protection because if we can have faith versus fear, we're protected from anxiety, from depression, from, from that sense of overwhelm and, and everything that comes our way. So I just wanted to add that. And, and also, like you are saying just now, we can have faith in our heart, but we can still sometimes feel like we overwhelmed. Like I had an incident this week where, where I know where God's taking me. I, I I believe all the things that are going to come to pass. Yet the the mountain that had to be climbed for that moment just felt too much. It like it overwhelmed me. But at, at that same place of feeling like oh, I just need a hug and I want to cry in my pillow, I I knew in my heart that it wasn't going to last. I, I knew it was just a moment. Because mm. there's no way God was going to leave me, nor forsake me, and there's no way that he wasn't going to fulfill that promise that he said he's going to. So I can become overwhelmed if I want to, but I can choose, mm. am I going to stay in that place or am I going to rise up in the faith that's in my heart? Or am I going to listen to this? Right. So we also have that choice. Yeah, and I think it's important for us to recognize that. You know, for me why we you know why we call these uh, discussions kingdom perspectives is just to give people you know a perspective of what the kingdom really looks like you know so we so much so many times the word is so it gets so intellectualized and it becomes like a, a knowledge base instead of like a practical 
you know, real life tool. And it's, it's good, you know, for us to share these experiences so that people can know that, you know, they're not alone. And that, mm -hmm. you know, even people that have been walking with the Lord for a long time still go through things, you know, and Smart. yeah, it's just, it's just your mind, you know, your, <clears throat> we all know that, you know, we, we spirit, soul, and we body and your emotions are connected to your soul, you know, and um, the soul is the same as basically the mind, you know, so your emotions, it's the same principle, you know, being in the kingdom. Yes, we have emotions. But we mustn't get emotional about faith things because right. it, we don't access faith in the soul realm. We access faith in the spirit realm. Mm. So, you know, when we, it's like you said, it's like even though you had those emotions, you still knew in your heart <clears throat> that God was going to do what God was going to do. You know, and everybody has their bad days. You know, everybody has their, their times where things can get overwhelming. But if we're rooted and grounded in the word and we're rooted and grounded in our faith and we're rooted and grounded in our relationship, mm -hmm. that stuff passes, you know, it's just like a wind that's blowing through. You know, you have a little, you have a little pity party and you lick, lick your little wounds and then you, <laughs> and then you move on, you know, and uh, it's okay. You know, God understands that we do yeah, have emotions. Okay. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And God understands that we're going to, you know, sometimes we're going to go through these things. We, you know, we just flesh. We're not, uh, we're not robots. We're not, um, you know, we're not superhumans. We're supernatural, but, you know, we're in this world. We're not of this world. And, but sometimes we, we have these feelings and we have these emotions and we deal with it and then we move on. You know, we don't have to, you know, pitch up a tent and camp there and think that our world's coming to an end. You know, that, that's where hope comes in. There's always a way out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's also why, it's so important for us to keep working on our faith, to keep building our faith, because when those moments come, it's very easy to get stuck in that place. It's very easy to stay there because it feels nice. As terrible mm. as what it, you know, as what it sounds is, it feels nice to have those feelings. Then the brain mm. actually sometimes responds to that um, because it's, it's nice to feel sorry for yourself. It's nice to have a cry, to get angry at the world, or even to get sympathy from people, you know, around your circumstances. It's a nice feeling. I see you smiling there. And, you know, you are you obviously agreeing with me. There's a, there's a kind of a payoff in there is a transaction that takes place. But, but when we don't live in that place and, and we, we have to, because, you know, if you're used to living in that place, it's a victim mentality, right? That, mm. That's what takes hold of you. But that feels nice because you're always getting sympathy or there's always something to complain about. There's always something. And, and there's something about our bodies that also respond to our own voice. So the, the more we speak about this thing, there's almost like a reward system happening, you know, dopamine drop, and, and there's this reward system that we're receiving. But now when we choose to come out of partnership with that and we have to have faith, there's no more, there's no payoff anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no sympathy anymore. There's no having an excuse to be miserable or, or having an excuse to wallow or having an excuse to, if you're in an addiction, to go and have that drug or have that drink because now you've got to pull your life together. You've got to have faith and you've got to rise up. And I'm not speaking against people that are in that place. We've been there, right? Yeah. But But we have a choice to move up out of that place and make better decisions for our life based on being who we are in Christ versus that victim mentality, which is tied into orphan spirit. We are not orphans. We have an awesome father who loves us and has made so much available to us for us to be able to rise up out of that place. Mm. But if we don't build our faith, we don't nurture our faith, we don't strengthen our spirit so we can strengthen our soul and our body, <clears throat> we're going to love to stay in that place. Yeah, and I think it's it's also got to do with um, it's it. You know, like we said last week, we we don't focus on the dead thing. 
You know, we don't <laughs> focus on the old man. The old, old things have passed away. All things have become new. So we, we need to focus on that new, new man. Like Paul says, we need to arise to the newness of life. Mm. Because Jesus came to give life. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. So we don't look at the death. We look at the life. You know, it says, it says in the word, um, I've given you two choices, you know, life or death. And it says to us, choose life. Mm. So... And I think it's like that, that thing of when you're in the world, your comfort mechanism, you know, that like you said, the drink or the drugs or the self-pity, because self-pity is also a comfort mechanism, mm. you know, feeling sorry for yourself. Depressions are, you know, and I'm not, I mean, I've, I've been there. I'm not, I'm, you know, like you said, we're not dissing anybody. We're talking about our own experiences. That even depression can be like a self-comforting mechanism. Mm. But that is, that's a typical example that if that's the fruit <clears throat> that you're experiencing, you know where it's coming from. Because the fruit determines the root. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's where you're going, you must know that the enemy is behind it. And there's something that he's trying to plant. And there's something that he's spoken to you on emotion that he's trying to make you feel that's taken you to that place. And then you need to war against it. You need to take those, those supernatural weapons, not the carnal weapons. Mm. And you need to war against that stuff mm. and come out of that stuff. You know, you can't, uh, you know, we don't believe what our senses tell us. We believe what the word tells us. Mm. You know, it's not what, it, you know, a, a Corinthian says, we, we walk by faith, not by sight. So that can apply to any of the physical senses. We walk by faith, not by emotions or feelings. We walk by faith, not by touching and sensing. Mm -hmm. So we don't believe our senses. We believe what the Word says. And our senses must not determine our faith. So it's not how we're feeling or how we're thinking. It's how we believe. Mm -hmm. That determines whether we see that result or don't see that result. And also that determines how long it's, it's going to take for us to get that result. Mm. Because the more that you, that you stay in faith, the quicker you'll get that result. Mm. Um, you know, Jesus didn't, uh, didn't reward Thomas for his lack of faith. You know, he said, Thomas, you've, you've, you've seen me and you haven't believed, but I'm saying blessed are those that, have seen, that haven't seen me and believe. Mm. So what, what was Jesus saying? Jesus was saying, stop, you know, tapping, you know, stop trying to do things by your senses and start going into your heart and accessing what God's got for you by faith. Mm -hmm. The senses are not going to do anything for you, you know. It's like you were saying, you know, the spirit is linked to the mind. And the more you focus on the spirit, the more. So it's like this. Why is it called a strong man? Because the enemy wants to build your mind into a muscle house, a powerhouse that's really strong so that it can dominate your spirit. Mm. And then, you know, and he does that, he, he gets your external senses to work with your mind and then your mind overpowers your spirit. But when you come into the kingdom, you need to make your, your spirit the strong man. You need to build him up so that he can then dominate the external senses. Mm. Because we don't live in a, you know, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So we don't operate like the world. We don't operate naturally. We operate supernaturally. We operate spiritually. Mm. Now, and the only way you're going to gain access, right, to somebody's house is if you bind the strong man, right? So if you think somebody gets into your house and you are, are that the, the leader of that home or the father, the husband, whatever, he's going to bind you so that he can get into the home because you're the strongest to get to what he needs to. So, so the enemy will use these things to bind us up so that he can get access. And the thing is, we're touching on, on something important here as well because we need to remember we are spirit, soul, body. If we think that we can operate separate from our soul and separate from our body, we make a big mistake because God created us to be interconnected. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they interconnected, right? So, so we need to be able to strengthen our spirit, which is the one that should be leading. But we also need to bring the soul on board and we need to bring the body on board. 
the only way we bring the soul and the body on board is we have to pay as much healthy attention to the soul and the body to keep because if your body is weak right you can't operate in a spirit like you want to. If your soul no, is weak true. or burdened or very true, you cannot operate in a spirit. And yeah. if we look at what the word says, we are spirit from spirit. So, so who would be relatable to the spirit would be the father because he's the father of lights and we come from him. Um, I think it's in 2 Peter. I don't have the exact scripture. Jesus says, He's our shepherd and the overseer of our souls. So he's in charge of the soul. He oversees the soul. So who do we turn to when our soul is in trouble? We turn to Jesus. Who do we turn to mm. when our spirit's not doing well? We turn to the Father. Who is in charge of the body? Whose temple is the body? The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, so so Father, Son, Holy Spirit all work together interconnectedly in the universe, in creation, whatever. They work interconnectedly within us. Our spirit, soul, and body need to work interconnectedly. And we need to understand also our body, our soul, and our spirit has mind, will, intellect, emotions. <laughs> they all have it, right? Unfortunately, we've nurtured our soul so much, like you were saying just now, that the spirit cannot take charge the way it's supposed to. Spirit's defiled, so spirit can't even sometimes take charge because there's, there's a cleansing that needs to happen on our spirits because we look at, um, two, I think it's 2 Thessalonians 5.17, um, I could be wrong, no, it's Thessalonians, that it can be become defiled and we need to be preserved holy and blameless, spirit, soul, and body until the coming of the Lord. Mm. But he does the work. Mm. So, so if our spirits, our body is not in good health, we're not taking care of ourselves, we're not eating properly, we're not doing the things we're supposed to. If our soul is burdened down, we're giving in to depression all the time, we're running in those things, there's no way we can operate in faith. There's no way we can, we can operate in, in that place. So it's so important for us to be able to engage more the senses of our spirit like you were saying, the senses, because it's the senses that are going to inform what's happening in the spirit, the soul, and the body. So what senses are you engaging, you know, in, in your everyday life that is going to negate your faith? If you're focusing more on the things of the spirit, you're going to build your faith. You focus more on the world. Uh, Colossians 3 verse 1 says that we must keep our eyes on the things above and not the things around us, not not the things in the world. But we live in this world. So if we manage our, our body and our soul properly, and we manage our spirit properly, they can work together. Mm. Um, yeah. well, I mean, it's important because, you know, if we look at, you know, we know the word teaches that there are councils in heaven, and mm -hmm. I don't believe that God does anything, you know, the Godhead has to agree for, for, for things to happen because God's not going to teach us something and not, and not apply his own principle into, into what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, you know, if you, if you read in Genesis, you know, God said, let us make, which means they were in agreement mm -hmm. with what they want to do make. So the same way that the Godhead is in agreement, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three, our body, spirit, soul, and body also need to be in agreement yeah. in order for us to flow effectively in the kingdom. Sure. And the key, the key to that, you know, is the spirit because the spirit, um, if you build him up, he start he starts to basically influence the rest of the setup. He starts to influence the soul and he starts to influence the body. And the thing is, if um, it's like you, 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 ministry work, your body's got to be healthy. Okay. And the, and the word says the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So when we access the Holy Spirit, when we access the spiritual realm, guess what? He's going to talk to you about eating properly. Guess mm -hmm. what? He's going to tell you, don't lie on your couch and watch TV and eat Cheetos the whole day. No, you know, he's going to say to you, eat healthy, go for a run, go for a walk, 
because I feel that, you know, sometimes I'm lying on my bed and I'm like, I don't want to do anything, you know, it's like, it's my chill day. And it's like, I just, all of a sudden, I feel like the strength coming up inside me and the strength is telling me to go and go for a run or to go do some weights or to go and do your, your exercise routine. Do something good so for God, your body. Hmm. Yeah, so God will also lead you in order to bring you in your, your spirit and your soul and your body into agreement so that you can function effectively. Because I can, I can be a powerful minister of God or I can, you know, be... Or I can be passionate and I really want to help people. But if, I, if I'm sick and I'm weak, you know, I can't really go and do those things. You know, my body's got to be healthy. My mind's got to be healthy. And also, um, you know, depression or, you know, having warfare in the mind, it makes your body tired. You know, when you're fighting with stuff the whole time, it starts to tire your body out. So it has an effect on it. And then it like it you draw back, and the and the word says God has no pleasure in those that draw back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I just want to make this more practical, you know, because we you know we we're talking a lot, and I, I found like in the past when I I used to listen to people speak, and I used to get overwhelmed, you know, because I used to think like what these people are saying, it's like so much, and it's so complicated, and you know how do I get there, and how do I do this? The fact is, you know. From the minute that you're in your mom's womb, you know, you're already hearing your, your parents' voices speaking to you. You know, there's stuff going on around you. And then when you're born, you know, you're interacting with, with your grandparents, your parents, with your parents' friends. Like, there's this whole interaction. Then you go to school and then you, you're getting exposed to a whole lot of different kids who have all grown up in different homes and you're getting exposed to more stuff. And as your life goes on, there's all the stuff that's starting to part of the way you think and part of the way you do stuff because you're learning from external influences. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people that have walked in the world for a long time, now they get saved and it's like this big daunting task, you know, like, what do I do now? And it's like, I just want to say to everybody, like, just have patience. You know, the word says through faith and patience and just allow God to do that work in you. Just start somewhere. Mm. because it's taken you 40 years or 30 years or 20 years to get to the point where you are now. Mm -hmm. Now you've entered into the, the kingdom, you know, you're experiencing life on a spiritual level and now you've got to learn. The same way that you had to learn through the external senses, you now got to learn through the internal mm. spiritual realm, you know, in the way that, that... So just give yourself time. You know, like I said, if you don't understand something, go listen to it again. Go listen to it again. Go read it again. Practice it again. You know, even if you get it wrong, even if it's not making sense, even if it doesn't feel right, just carry on, carry on, carry on. Mm -hmm. um, doing those things. Don't, don't be overwhelmed by too much facts and figures and don't be overwhelmed by, um, you know, other people's walk. You know, rather just get the positives out of it. Mm. It's like, you know, something that really grates me, you know, that I've seen in the body of Christ is, I sit in a church and, you know, the pastor has been serving God for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. And then a young believer walks in that's been serving God for like three months. And then he goes and, you know, on a drinking, binging weekend or, you know, whatever. He does something that's out of place, something he shouldn't do. And then, you know, the pastor lambastes him and he wants to hold this young, this young believer to the same standard as what he's on, but he's been serving God for 30 years. Mm. You can't, you just can't do that. Mm. You've got to give people space to make mistakes. You, they're going to get it wrong. You've got to give them space to fall. Yeah. You know, it's not your focus. It's not, you know, you're not, you're not waiting for them to fall. You know, you don't want them to fall, but if they do, give them space for that. Mm. So God, and that is how God is with us. You know, I often say to people, it really helped me to experience God as a dad when I had a son. Because, you know, if my son falls, I don't kick him and say to him, he's stupid and, and you know, chuck sand in his face and make him feel, you know, I pick him up, I dust him off and I say, come, let's, let's carry on walking further. So, we, you know, we're allowed to fall, we're allowed to make mistakes. So don't let things overwhelm me. You know, the consistency is key. Just keep at it. Just keep going, going, going. You know, there's, there's times in my life where I just all of a sudden realized that thing that I was struggling with isn't there anymore. And I, I, didn't, I don't know how it happened. I don't know when it happened. 
it just doesn't bother me anymore. It's not there anymore. Yeah, God works those those things sort of out in our lives as as we go along. Like I often say to clients that have come to me and and say, for example, they've just come out of new age practices or they've just come out of whatever it is or they're struggling with smoking or drinking. And this is what I say to them. Don't focus on the flesh stuff. Focus on your relationship with God. I promise you that stuff will fall away. And I've seen it time and time again. I I have a particular client that I worked with that struggled with addiction, smoking, drinking. And I would constantly give this advice because, you know, people self condemn, they self accuse, they self judge. And then they get to a place where they don't even want to see you anymore because they feel so ashamed because, oh, I did this again and I did that again. And I have to reiterate that stuff doesn't matter. You love the Lord. You focus on your journey with God. Where is he taking you? You keep praying into that stuff. You ask him to help you with that stuff. And I mean, that client of mine today is free, free from drug addiction, free from alcohol addiction, free from whatever it was that was holding them back because they just consistently had joy in the Lord. Like I, I don't, this person, I've never seen such a childlike faith and joy in the Lord. Even though all that stuff was happening in the background, she just had this incredible joy and childlike faith in the Lord. And, and I, I had the sense that, that he just loved that about her. She was just a child before him. She just would get excited about things that that we don't even get excited about anymore. You know, the older you get or the longer you've walked with the Lord, you actually sometimes mm. forget some of that excitement. And it used to bring me so much joy, and I could just sense God's heart for her. And he came through. You know, he, he all that stuff fell away, and, and this is important for us to understand that we need to have grace for people where they're at because it's also – it's it's the kindness of God that brings man to repentance, right? If we if 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 that kindness doesn't flow through us, it's us that touches people's lives, right? It's that kindness that touches their lives that brings them to a place. But we need to be able to walk that road with them. But this has been playing in my spirit the whole time while we're talking, and it's Jude one verse twenty that says, "But you, beloved." building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm. So, so you were speaking just now, how do we make this thing practical? How do, we, how do we bring this in? A lot of people don't believe in praying in tongues or mm. praying in the Holy Spirit. And this is one of our greatest weapons yeah. and I think one of our greatest tools that we need in our belt. If you can pray in the Holy Spirit, when you're going through stuff or you don't know where you're at or you don't know what's going on around you, that stuff lifts. That And that's how you build your holy faith, is praying in the Holy Spirit because our soul cannot build our faith. Our body cannot build our faith. So so we need to engage our spirit um, in, in that to also build it up. Yeah, so we, you know, we might be going a little bit off topic here, but I feel this is something that um, the Holy Spirit wants us to talk about. You know, you're making a very valid point there, and I think it's it's something that we need to take note of. You know, if if the enemy attacks something really hard in the kingdom, then you must know it's important. And praying in the Spirit is something that the enemy has attacked very hard. Mm-hmm. Um. I know that when I, in the past, I was a very strong advocate that, um, you know, against tongues until I got filled with the spirit and I realized, but okay, actually, you know, it is real. And I used to be very, I used to have very convincing arguments against, you know, why tongues is a lot of nonsense. And, you know, you think you're clever, but you're not. And, uh, once you experience things for yourself, that's why it's so important for us to experience God and not just to hear about Him and read about Him. Um, I knew that it was real. Mm. And, you know, as you and I were talking the other day, 
one of the arguments that uh, people have is that you know tongues is not an hev a heavenly language or a different language, you know, which is contrary to what the word says. It says it is a heavenly language. And when they were filled with the Spirit in Acts two, you know, a lot of people say no, they weren't talking in a different language in tongues. They were talking in the language of the people that were there. You know, but it says in Acts 2, it doesn't say that they were speaking in the tongues of the people that were there. It says the people that were there heard them in their own tongue. Mm. So, so that doesn't, it doesn't mean because they heard them in their tongue, they were speaking their tongue. You know, otherwise the Bible would have said they were speaking their tongue and that's why they heard them. Mm. And I know from experience that people that have prayed in tongues, that have prayed in the Spirit, um, I have a friend, you know, I, I, can, I can give you quite a few examples where that's happened, where people have heard them speaking, you know, praying in their own language, whether it was Bulgarian, whether it was Hebrew, that, you know, so it's real. And it's something that the enemy really attacks. Um, but the, <clears throat> that's just like a side note, you know, on that. You know, that we need to pay attention that probably if the enemy is attacking something and there's an issue in the body of Christ, um, you know, probably that's important. And that's why he doesn't want it to be in, in every Christian's life because he knows that it's, 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 it gives us too much power over him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, you see why we don't, okay, so Romans 4. Verse 17 to 21, I just want to read that. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Okay, it's speaking about Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who also quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they are. Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. I'm just going to paraphrase a bit. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God mm. and being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able to perform. So we, we, we see the difference there between Thomas's faith and, and Abraham's faith. Thomas's faith was a, was a natural, it was a human faith, where Abraham's faith was a supernatural faith. Mm. You know, Thomas said, if I see and I touch, I'll believe. That's a human faith. It's not a, it's not a spirit faith. But Abraham said, even though everything that's natural, everything that I can see and touch is contrary to what God said, I'll, I believe God. Mm. Mm. So there's a, you know, that, that there's a very good example for us, you know, between, and Jesus even said to Thomas, you know, blessed are those that have not seen and believe. Mm. Um, you know, the one day we were having a, we were having a meeting and I feel this is, you know, what God wanted me to share. And it was a Sunday evening at um, Overcomers Through Christ, the Fisherman's Village weekend. OTC weekend and the Sunday night is like a service and then we have a healing meeting and we pray for people and there was this girl there and she had an issue with her back and like I could just you know you can just feel sometimes you know that there's an issue and I, you know I was just like I, I remember you know people had to come to you for prayer and I just like for some reason that night, I got all the, you know, the problem, the problem children, you know, the ones with like stuff that were really hectic. And I was like, Lord, why are you giving me these people? I don't like, this is like hectic stuff. I got to pray for you. And I don't, you know, it's like, you got to like uh, really have faith <laughs> for this stuff to happen. And um, this one girl came with a back issue and there were three of us praying for her and we were praying and we were praying and all of a sudden, you know, she just jumped up and she was so angry. She was so, so, so angry. And she just said, this thing doesn't work. Prayer doesn't work. Faith doesn't work. God doesn't work. He doesn't want to heal me. She just totally went off her rocker. 
And I just like looked at this and I was like, yo, Lord, why am I, like, I don't know, like, how much, you know, why did this woman not come to me? How must I deal with this now? You know, and I felt embarrassed because I was, I was the one praying for it, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, in the beginning, you feel a bit awkward, you know, you're trying to like, you know, you're doing stuff and, you know, you want to live for Jesus. You know, the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. <laughs> <laughs> and. She, she had had many people pray for her. I mean, she had like literally like more than a hundred people had prayed for her. Like she literally counted. And I think she had even been at like, I don't even, I don't want to mention the name, but it was like a, like a very well-known pastor that had massive crusades and stuff. And like, she didn't get healed. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I mean, the Holy Spirit is, oh, he has so much wisdom. Like he says to me, ask her if she knows that the that she's made up of a spirit, a soul, and a body, and does she know what that does she know what it means? So I went up to her, I said, you know what? You know, God does love you. I said, let's forget about your back for a moment. I just I want to ask you a question. And I said to her, Do you do you know that do you know that you are spirit, soul, and body? And do you know what that means? That you have that you are a spirit, that you live in a body and you have a soul. And she like just looked at me, you know, she, I think, I think her background, her background was uh, in here, from the in here church. And she just looked at me and she says, no, I don't have, I don't understand, you know, I didn't know that. So I'm not going to go into detail, obviously. So I just quick, you know, I just, I spent time with her explaining her about the spirit, the soul and the body and how it all works together, you know, a little bit of what we touched on just now. And the Holy Spirit said to me, now ask her, has she ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? And, I, and part of my explanation was that God is a spirit and that's how we access God, not from our mind, not from our body, we're accessing from our spirit. So just making her aware that she's a spirit being and that's how she's going to connect with God. And I said, have you, ever, have you ever felt the presence of God? Have you ever been filled with His spirit? And she said, no. So I said, okay, but I feel God wants you to experience that tonight. <clears throat> and I started praying with her. And I put, you know, I put my hand on her head and I was praying. And then I put my hand on her, on her, on her spirit, you know, on her stomach, because that's what God showed me. And as I did that, I just felt, I just, I just felt like the, the, the anointing and the power of God, like just flood into her. And she just like, she just got <clears throat> knocked out, <clears throat> just totally unconscious. She was just lying on the floor and she lay there probably for a good 45 minutes. <clears throat> and while she was lying there, um, me and the the lady that run that r runs that ministry, Linda Patterson, were just having you know a bit of a chat, and we were just standing there by you know waiting for 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 God to deal with her for her to wake up. And so while she's lying there, I see she starts coming to. You know, and so we both walk over to her and we, we just sort of wait till she's like, you know, fully around and we help her up. And the Holy Spirit says to me, <laughs> the Holy Spirit says to me, ask her, how's her back? <laughs> <laughs> so I say to her, how's your back? <laughs> and she like, like her face, like she just gets like these big eyes and she has like this totally stunned look on her face. She says, my back's healed. It's like, I don't feel any pain anymore. I don't have any discomfort. She says, it's, it's sorted. Mm. And it was like, why I'm, I feel God wanted me to relate the story is because we don't access our healing through our mind. We don't access our healing even through people, you know, in terms, you know, we don't look at men. All God needed was access. And you mm. couldn't have access to her through prayer because her mind was in the way because she had been prayed for many times. So he came in from a different angle. And once the spirit had access, he could release the life and the power that she needed to receive her healing. Mm. So that to me, you know, is a, is a good example as well is that, you know, we don't access things naturally. The spirit is what makes the difference. And it's the minute that we can let the spirit in, the minute we can access the spirit realm, it brings life, it brings restoration, it brings transformation. So whatever we want to access from God, you know, whether it's uh, healing in the body, whether it's healing in the mind, you know, whatever we're trusting in for, you know, we, we access that in the spiritual realm, we access that from the spirit, you know, and that is why, 
uh, <clears throat> this girl received her healing, you know, is because it was it was from the spirit. It was it came through the spiritual realm. You know, the, the Holy Spirit just had to get that access so that he could work with what he needed to work. And you know, before you know, while you were talking about the tongues and it's something that's attacked in the body of Christ. I also heard, you know, the word Kundalini, which we know, which we know refers to the Kundalini spirit. Mm. And uh, I also believe, you know, I heard that because that is also something that we just need to touch on. We don't, we're not going to go into depth. But how do you, you know, how do you know that a a twenty rand note is a fake? The only way you know that a twenty rand note is a fake is if you know the real thing very well. And you can spot the difference. If somebody mm. gives you a fake 15 rand note, you're going to immediately know it's fake because you know there's no 15 rand note. But if somebody gives you a fake 20 rand note, you've got to take a good look at it to see whether it's fake or not. Mm. And, and a lot of times, you know, um, I prayed for this girl. You know, a lot of people, they give it different names, you know, falling under the power of God, being slain in the spirit. You know, I don't, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. The fact is, when you are faced with the power of God, and I'm talking about the true power of God, okay, I'm not talking about pushing people over, I'm not talking about something that you can conjure up in your own strength, but when the power of God comes on you, when the power of God floods you, something's going to give way. Hmm. When the spirit and the flesh meet, something's going to give way, and it's not going to be the spirit, especially if it's God's power. Hmm. And, and, not, and sometimes people don't fall over, but sometimes they do, you know. It's like, and, and the reason why that happens is sometimes God just puts you down <clears throat> so that you can just rest and he can just deal with your heart and he can speak to you and he can just encourage you and work with you. You know, it's almost like he does a Holy Spirit surgery on you, mm. works mm. with your heart, you know, works with your body. He does what's needed, works with your mind mm. to bring that agreement, to line things up, because that is why. She got her healing because the spirit lined up, the mind lined up, and then the body lined up. That's what God did with her. So, and the same thing is, you know, it's like a lot of times people attack in the body of Christ that people fall over when they get prayed for. And they, they say it's psychosomatics and they say it's this. And sometimes it can be that. Okay. But the point is the enemy will always copy. He can't create anything. So if you see the, if you see something that doesn't look right, it's be, and you think it's from the enemy, then you know he's copied it because he can't create stuff. He's not creative. So he takes what God has created, what God's doing, he copies it, then he perverts it, and then people think that it's not from God. And this is why we need. This is why I stress on relationship. Get to know God, mm -hmm. because if you know God, you're going to be able to discern. What's from God and what's from the enemy? Mm, mm. You know, I don't want to get too technical, but I mean, you, I've heard people, you know, pray in tongues and, I, and I, I immediately, because I pray in tongues and because I've been doing it for a long time and I know what it sounds like to pray in the spirit, I can immediately discern this tongue's not coming from the right place. I can mm. hear it. it. It's a demonic tongue. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual tongue, but it's not from God. Mm. And we need to get to a place with God and we need to be filled with the Spirit so that when we are faced with a counterfeit, we can discern. Because otherwise we throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Like we said last week, you've got to give everything a chance. You've got to give God a fair chance. Mm. You know, you, you can't just chuck it out. You've got, to, you've got to sincerely, you know, I was thinking, you know, I don't know if it was the first podcast, the second podcast where I said, um, I've never been faced with a question that I haven't been able to answer. You know, even if it's questions that people have been struggling with their whole life. And I know that's a big statement to make. But I just want to add to that is, yes, yeah, sometimes people come with questions and they don't get their answers in terms of they come with an antagonistic attitude. You know, they come with, you know, God is not mocked. You know, don't come, don't come with a bad attitude when you ask your question. Every time somebody's had a really sincere thing in their life, it's a really sincere question. They're coming sincerely before God to find out He answers them. But when they come with arrogance and pride and they, they want to fight, you know, because they really believe that they mm. know the answer and they know the right answer, they don't get their answer. Mm. Because God doesn't have to explain Himself to anybody, mm. you know. 
But if you humble yourself before God, He does show you the truth. Mm. So we need to humble ourselves before God on these things in the body of Christ that we're not sure about and allow Him to take us through the process to show us what's truth and what's not truth. Mm. So never, never attack your fellow believers in the body of Christ because they believe something different to what you believe. Mm. You know, the main thing is we believe in Jesus Christ. Whether you, whether you pray in the Spirit or whether you don't pray in the Spirit, it doesn't affect your salvation. We can still connect around Jesus. We can still be friends around Jesus. Mm. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just felt someone to do, add that in. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, as we close, because we need to close, we can talk all day on this topic. Um, again, it's just that concept of, like you spoke earlier, but you know, about life and God is life. And what we need to realize is that death is going to always be the enemy of life and death will be the last enemy that's defeated and destroyed. That's the word says, but Jesus already has those keys, right? Mm -hmm. To death and Hades. Death and Hades are principalities. They are personified in the word of God, which means they are principalities. So death is always going to be operating against us. And also if we look, you know, at the counterfeit again, we must remember the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the counterfeit of the tree of life. So often when we hear we're eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and we're not eating mm. of the tree of life. Mm. So, so that tree of life is where our sustenance needs to come from. Um, because even that, like that antagonism you're talking about, people that that don't believe, people that that will question God and those things, is there's very much a knowledge of good and evil operating there. You know where yeah. it's got to be um, cut and dried. It's got to be scientific. There's got to be an answer for it. It's the same, you know, this is where Kundalini is birthed out of as well. Is that that tree? It's the false tree of life. It's the counterfeit mm. tree of life. So, so the only way we're really going to grow, right, and the only way we're really going to get to that place of having discernment is to walk out the road. <laughs> we, we, we learn discernment. We learn as we go. I don't know if learn is the right word, but I think, you know, we grow in discernment as we walk out our faith journey with God. That's how we grow. Um, because if if we're not going to walk it out, we're not going to learn, we're not going to grow, and, and that's just the way it is. Just like a child's got to learn to walk um, or crawl and then walk and then run, it's it's the same with us. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, um, and, and, you know, that's why it's important for us to have the revelation of faith, you know, um, just to close off, is because faith, accesses all of these things you know faith faith accesses god on a spirit level faith activates these things and you know you were talking about believers and seeing that joy and that passion when they first get saved um it's like you know when i look at new believers i love that innocence you know i see there's like there's almost like an innocence because I, I see it i see them in the spiritual realm i see them on a spirit level mm. and i can see that childlike innocence that they have and it's 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 a blessing you know and you've got to access god with a childlike faith you've got to access god with that innocence and just believe mm. and when you do that um you have access you know, it, faith just works. If you believe, it works. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah, I mean, I mean. All right, so guys, we're going to leave it off there. And um, we love your feedback. So please give us feedback, whether you want to drop a comment or, or you want to feedback personally, please give us your feedback on these talks. And if they are helping in your life or bringing revelation, or even if you just, enjoying them please let us know and um burn will you close in prayer for us yes so father we just thank you for today <clears throat> thank you father that uh you let in, in in guide us into all truth father i just pray that you know lord let, let today not just be words let today not just be knowledge father mm -hmm. but i just thank you father that whatever 
Um, we spoke today and whatever people heard, Father, let it be life and let it be truth and let it be power in their lives, Father, and let it transform. Holy Spirit, take the seed that was planted today, Father, and bring a harvest mm -hmm. and just transform the lives, Father, and just bring people into a more intimate relationship with you, a more intimate knowledge of who you are <clears throat> and how they live with you and how they partner with you. And yeah, Lord, and just how much they are loved by you, Father. I just pray that everybody that's listening today, Father, that you'll just saturate them, permeate them with your love, Jesus. Just surround them with your love. Comfort them, Lord. Those that are in need, Father, I just declare that my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. I declare that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And I declare that you are strengthened with power and might in the inner man. I just pray, Lord, that you'll take their relationship and their intimacy with you, Father, from glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Boone. Thank you, everybody, for Thank you. watching and listening today. Stay tuned. Stay inspired. And remember that you are part of God's kingdom story. Amen. Amen. Amen.